Good morning, friends, and welcome to a special YouTube edition of The Biblical Perspective. What I'm doing just for you, a little bit shorter. If you want the full load of this one, though, you'll have to go to the Rumble channel. Go to Rumble and look for Pastor Craig Bailey. Don't put any spaces in there. Put it all together, and uh, hopefully you'll be able to find me there and follow me, because sometimes I'm able to say things on Rumble that I can't say in some other places like YouTube. And you might get a hint to this when you understand what I'm going to talk about today. My whole subject is churches. Why are you still locked down? Church, open up. I sometimes have conversations with people and I find out that their church still isn't meeting, has totally shut down ministry, isn't doing anything. How do you square that with the Word of God? Well, friends, I don't believe you can, and whereas we need to be cautious and precautious about some things, we can't let ministry go to pot because someone has locked us down. Now, in particular, to uh, just put some background on this, the past couple of weeks we've had all kinds of news coming out, one coming from a university in Japan that uh, found a, a study about a particular uh, medication we can't mention that's very easy and cheap, ridiculously cheap, doesn't have any more patents on it, is actually a good antiviral against COVID. Well, doctors should be free to prescribe anything they want to to help us with that. And in some countries, they are free to do that. But some parts of our own nation still punish doctors that prescribe things that aren't according to the, the number one protocols that benefit Big Pharma. Well, as we followed these stories, we found that all over the world today, especially with the Omicron variant, that there's very little any of these vaccines are going to do to totally stop it. It seems to be everywhere from Antarctica to even here recently, Kiribati. And this is the most... Uh, I, you have to laugh a little bit at this story. This is the most hilarious story. Kiribati, a nation of only around 120,000 people in the Pacific, the place has a lot of World War II history. One of the bloodiest battles of World War II happened on Tarawa, one of the islands that's a part of this chain. They had been completely COVID-free, at least until a few weeks ago, when a chartered flight bringing in some Mormon missionaries that had been away from the island, need to get back home, decided they were, they were able to now finally fly these people back to where they live. So they're, they're citizens of Kiribati who needed to get back home. They went through every possible precaution. These are folks who have been vaccinated. These are folks that had been quarantined for two weeks. They had to have a negative COVID test. They jumped through all the hoops and then some. But yet... When they flew back to Kiribati, somehow COVID got on that plane with them. Well, now there are over 500 cases in Kiribati, and the folks there are panicking because it's like, we didn't have this, we didn't have this, and now it's here. What are we going to do? We're going to just lock down our society. And, and folks are just panicking over the fact that Omicron has perhaps invaded their country. Well, friends, what we're seeing is that the panic is unnecessary in most places. You're not going to be able to stop this virus any more than the folks in the most vaccinated country in the world, Gibraltar, were able to stop it. Instead, they just canceled Christmas. What's up with that? And then uh, I think the, the main and most, to me, telling uh, part of the news has been that some countries like Denmark have said, hey, it's ridiculous to fight this. We are getting rid of all the lockdowns. We're going back to normal. We're going to live with this. And folks, go back and have a life. And many other countries are following that particular, uh, I wouldn't say example. Uh, but in the United States, we have a mixed bag. We have some states where they just want to lock down residents and give you every reason to be angry at your government. And in some of those places, the very leaders are so hypocritical, just like you folks in California. Gavin Newsom, you've got all these harsh mask mandates and lockdowns. The stadium in which you attended a football game and had your picture taken with Magic Johnson and some friends, you guys celebrated without any lockdowns, without any masks. You were just having a good time at the ball game while others were told they had to wear a mask to get in, keep a mask on. Let's make your children wear masks even while they're outside in PE. And I mean, where does this madness stop? 
So friends, I'm, I'm for one of those that says the church can't be a place where this madness continues. Unlock the doors of the church. Don't lock it down. We cannot say we're obeying God if we have locked down our churches and said we're not going to do ministry because there's a particular virus running around the world. Matter of fact, one of the videos I watched this week was so funny. It was by Stanbridge Scientific that said, finally, science ends lockdowns. Well, now, science may be ending the lockdowns, but that doesn't mean the politicians will. A new Johns Hopkins study showed that lockdowns had no effect on COVID mortality rates, but those lockdowns did have a terrible effect on economics, on schools, other social issues, and health in general. Kim Iverson on the Hill looked into the camera and said when reporting on this, look, I hate to say I told you so, but that's right. You told us so. These lockdowns are worthless, and now it's time to let go of them. But church, why aren't you letting go of them? Many churches still think they're doing their communities a favor by making ministry almost impossible and making worship something that you can only do perhaps via a camera or if you go to someone else's church. Friends, in the lockdown in your church, open the doors. Let's start worshiping because what we've discovered is that communities of faith have a tremendous amount of power to not only minister but to help in the healing processes. Now, our church is one that's open. We've never totally shut down for anything. When COVID first hit, we moved out on the front lawn and had worship for almost a year. Our folks loved it. Uh, they tailgated. They brought their lawn chairs. We let folks wear masks if they wanted to. We didn't require them. And we never had any significant COVID outbreaks in our church family because of it. We just kept worshiping. Now, we did shut down those tight little Sunday school classes for a while, but now all of that's fully back in gear. If you want to come worship, you want to come study the Bible with a small group, you're free to do that. Want to wear a mask in your class? That's fine. We've already discovered, though, most of those cloth masks you have are nothing more than face decorations. I didn't say that. The folks that know better have said it. But if you want to wear a mask, that's fine. You wear a mask. Folks can wear a mask to our worship services. That's fine. If you don't want to wear a mask, that's fine. Do what you're comfortable with. But friends, don't neglect the worshiping together with God's people that we're commanded to do in Scripture. I would rather obey God and not men when it comes to that. Well, what do we do in church? Well, there's some things we've neglected, not neglected, excuse me, but changed our offerings now go in a box along with our prayer cards and things. We don't pass an offering plate up and down the aisles. Easier way to pass germs, of course. We don't pass communion trays anymore. So some things like that we have done to try to stay healthier. We have some people that are vaxxed, some boosted, some unvaxxed, and I guess everything in between. We don't make discriminatory differences between people in our church. Unlike some people, a couple of famous pastors in the Big Eva camp that are in New York City actually said, look, if you're vaccinated to a certain degree, you can sit here. If you're unvaccinated, we've got a corner in the balcony maybe for you to sit in or you can't even attend worship. That to me is just disgusting. And so, friends, I'm saying if you're really the body of Christ, obey the Lord and open your church. Let's start worshiping. I know some of you that are some of my friends in Canada have had to face the idea that pastors have been jailed for the crime of having church and having their doors open for worship. I think it's a terrible, intrusive way for governments to invade in places that they have no business invading. And there's nothing that we've seen from all the evidence of two years now to say that the church in it is any more unhealthy than Walmart, Costco, your local grocery store, any of the other places that you get to go, including your schools and your school systems. Do we sing? Absolutely. Heard somebody tell me the other day that, oh, well, we've been told we can gather in church if we get so far apart, but we can't sing. I don't know about you, but I don't worship very well unless I sing. 
and we sing loud and long at our church, and we've done it from the beginning of the COVID epidemic. Why? Because we think lifting our praises to the Lord is not only a command of Scripture, but I believe there's a power there of pulling people together and joining their hearts in what God has commanded us to do, in lifting the, the praise of our lips, the fruit of our lips to the Lord, and we expect Him to respond. So come when you can. Do what you're comfortable with. But friends, I'm here to tell you, those of you who are still kind of hiding out, you want to be hermits, you want to stay away from your churches, why? Why? We've already seen that society does better when it functions. And for the sake of your own spiritual well-being and your own mental health, you need to get out and be with people. Now, there's a church community in the United States that practiced this from the very beginning. I followed up with them to see how that was going. And if you check into what the Amish folks did when COVID hit, you might be shocked at how well it has turned out. In Lancaster County, Pennsylvania, there was an interview done with one of those particular uh, community members who talked about the things that are important to the Amish and some of the things that they are concerned with. They're not real fond of the government or public education systems or public health. They're very suspicious of those. When they got back to worship in May of 2020, they immediately celebrated communion together. They do it in a way that I never would in our church. They pass a common cup. Everybody drinks together. And so anything you have can be passed along. Now, I wouldn't do that in a Baptist church just because, look, I don't care if it's a cold. I don't want you to pass along anything. just doesn't seem real sanitary to me. We always have the little individual uh, doses, if you will, so that folks will not have to partake of the common cup. But that's not true with the Amish. And the Amish and Mennonite communities discovered that very quickly everybody got COVID. I mean, everybody. Now, when it came to shutting down, were they going to shut down their communities? No. Not only did they not shut down, but this man they interviewed said shutdowns went against everything we believe and we're against that. Did they let their folks that came down with COVID go to the hospitals? For the most part, no. Why? Because the hospitals said, oh, if you come in, we're going to isolate you. You can't have visitors. We've got hospitals doing that to this day, even in our state. Well, what's the use in that? Have you not read all the articles, the studies that have been done for decades on the power of friends and family and pastors praying and others visiting people that are in the hospital and sick? Friends, isolation actually promotes illness. When people are isolated and cut off from their family, it causes them to have the kind of mental depression and other issues that may make their their physical issues, their sicknesses linger. So friends, I think what the Amish did is remarkable. It was said of them, and I quote, last March, they were the first community to achieve herd immunity. What happened? Almost everybody had COVID, and that was one of the more serious strains, by the way. They had COVID, they got over it, and they've been functioning. And not only is that, somebody said, well, that's hard to prove. They didn't test as much as everybody else. But, you know, you know when you've been sick, don't you? Yes, you do. <laughs> this particular leader said, look, few if any of our folks are vaccinated. And we never stopped working. We never shut down our businesses. We never did anything like that because it just didn't seem appropriate. Matter of fact, while everybody else shut their businesses down and they were suffering, we made more money than anybody else. Well, having heard that, and also looking at some of the statistics coming in from around the world, I believe it just makes sense for the church to say, we're here to minister, not to do something stupid. Don't do things that are going to necessarily spread any disease. In fact, I tell folks in my church, in my fact, if you're thinking about visiting First Baptist Church of Winsboro, South Carolina, if you're sick, don't come. I would have told you that before COVID hit. Do we not have enough sense to do this? If you have something that's contagious, if you have a fever, if there's any sign that you might be ill, stay home, my friends. You can watch us on YouTube. But friends, as we think about the most important power the church has to spread the good news of the gospel, we've got to understand that you can't get it done unless you're having your huddle. 
to call the play before you get on the field. You got to have the team meeting. You've got to have the times where you're inspired, where you study together, where you learn the game plan. My friends, worship is not optional. It's absolutely necessary. That's why not only do we need to support the church's freedom to do that, but you need to get in church yourself. You need to be a part of the active body of Christ working in this day and age to bring healing and blessing and the good news of the gospel to those that need to hear it. Well, that's my take for today. Thanks for joining me on The Biblical Perspective. We'll do this again next week as we wake up in the Word, Monday through Friday, and tomorrow as I'll bring you the message in our first of our series on the Upper Room Discourse from John chapter 13. So join us each and every day right here in uh, the wonderful with the wonderful opportunity of connecting via video, but you worship somewhere in person every chance you get with even if it's a small group of God's people where you can know and be known and love one another, inspire one another around God's word to be followers of Jesus Christ. God bless you. I'll see you again right here tomorrow.